Ah, here we are, up in the North Woods, in a jack pine stand. You smell that? That's wonderful. I love the North Woods. But you know what? Take a look at these trees. They're getting old. What do you think is going to happen here in the next 10 or 20 years to these jack pines? Well, jack pine is one of Michigan's most fascinating forest types, and it's got a really good story to tell. So, stay tuned. Jack pines may not be the most common tree in Michigan, but in some sandy areas of northern Michigan, you'll find it everywhere. Yeah, and it's not exactly the most beautiful tree. In fact, it's kind of the ugly cousin among conifers. It puts the ug in ugly. Yeah, it kind of does. But you know, on these sandy soils up north, it's about the only tree that's going to grow well. But even though it's not very pretty, jack pine's got some really cool ecology associated with it. One of the most fascinating forest trees and forest types in Michigan having to do with fire and strange cones and sandy soils and we'll talk about all those. What do you say? Okay. Sounds okay. Good. Let's do it. These are jack pines and here we have jack pine cones. But this is where the story gets a little weird. Did you know that most jack pine cones are glued shut? Glued shut? Yeah, let me show you. Jack pine cones keep their seeds protected because they know they live in a place where there's lots of fire. So they glue these cones shut to keep the seeds safe. And scientists call that serotony. And jack pines have serotonous cones. And if we look at this jack pine, We've got last year's cone that's glued shut. We have this year's cone, see it's green, it's glued shut. And we also have a cone that's open. Aha, they do both of these things, glued shut and open up. And then if you look at these little brown appendages, those are the male parts of the tree that produce the pollen, which you see in the spring all over cars and pond surfaces. And some people sneeze and get runny nose, but how do the seeds get out of these glued shut cones? The answer is heat. It takes about 120 degrees for at least a few minutes to melt the glue. Fire will do this. Within a few days after a fire, the cones open up and the seeds fall out. Not only does that wildfire open up the cones, but the seeds drop down onto the ground that have been prepared just for jack pine. The fires burnt away the competing vegetation and the other pine needles and debris that might have been on the ground. The seeds germinate, and that's a perfect set of conditions for our baby jack pine trees. And why do jack pines like it here? Because they can't take the shade. If they have too much shade, they cannot survive. They cannot grow and become adult, grown-up trees. Keep them open. Okay, but wait, Bill. If these cones are glued shut, how do we get them open without wildfire? Well, the answer to that still involves heat. Those kinds of temperatures can be found without a wildfire in clear-cut areas like this one here. On warm sunny days, the air just above these sandy soils can reach temperatures that actually exceed 120 degrees. Scientists call jack pine forests fire dependent. Actually, it's more like heat or high heat dependent, but historically this happens mostly in connection with wildfires. In order for forest managers to mimic the outcome of a wildfire, they leave all those tops near or on the ground with all of those cones. And so those serotonous cones come unglued with all of that heat, release their seeds, and they grow like mad. Jack pine forests are one of Michigan's most fascinating forest types. Even though they're not particularly attractive, they do have some interesting ecologies to them. And one of them is habitat for the rare Kirtland's warbler. Now this small Tweety bird may have gone extinct were it not for the combined efforts of many forest managers and wildlife biologists. Yeah, this is a real success story because management has been so successful that the Kirtland's warbler is scheduled to be taken off the endangered species list. And that's a great wildlife story. 
You bet. These Kirtland's warblers need young jack pine stands with particular spacing requirements in order to successfully rear their young. Most of the world's Kirtland's warbler breeding habitat is in Michigan's northern lower peninsula. But the birds have come back and are doing so well that they've even expanded their breeding to places in the upper peninsula and in Wisconsin. And like a lot of Michiganders, the little Kirtland's warbler flies all the way to the Bahamas to spend its time in the winter. Not a bad gig for such a little bird. Not at all. Michigan forests are just filled full of interesting and amazing stories. 